Hi, I'm Nicole and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be painting a windstone. And if you're like, Nicole, what the heck is a windstone? Don't worry, I'll explain it. Windstone Editions is a company that produces fantasy sculptures. This video is not sponsored, by the way. I just really love this company. And I'll put a link to the website in the description. Windstone Editions also has a nice selection of paint your own sculptures for people to customize themselves. Painting these figures is one of my favorite hobbies, and I hope this video inspires you to try it. Here's the paint your own fancy Corinne that I'll be painting. You can even pick the eye color you want with lots of amazing color choices. Every paint your own figure comes with a written guide with lots of helpful tips, a self-adhesive felt pad for the bottom of your figure so it doesn't get damaged, and also a set of glass eyes in whatever color you chose. I chose these really pretty green ones. In the guide, it's going to tell you to test fit your eyes, and that's what I'm doing here. Each glass eye is unique, so sometimes they don't fit perfectly. You have to take into consideration that you'll be adding paint layers, so if the fit is too tight before painting, the eyes may not fit after painting. I, of course, learned this one the hard way myself. If you need to adjust the fit, just carefully scrape away a little bit of the material so it fits nicely. I'm using a mini X-Acto blade. I sanded this area as well after I was done. So here's my final fit test with the eye and it fits great. Careful, they get squirrely. Now I drew a mock-up of this design in Procreate to help me plan out my colors and design. This original design was a bit too hard for me once I started painting, so I ended up simplifying it. I'm using a mix of different acrylic paints as recommended in the guide. I'll link to the guide in my description. Let's get to painting. I just like to say, if you're a pro at airbrushing, these next parts might be hard to watch. I'll admit, I am not a pro at airbrushing, but I also believe you don't have to be good at something to enjoy it. And I do love airbrushing, even though it scares me a bit, because I barely know what I'm doing. Oh my god, that is so much paint. Okay, so you could say that I'm a bit heavy-handed with the airbrushing. Now here, I am just getting on my first color which is like this lavender pink kind of neon color. And I'm just going for it, having fun, because that's what this is about. It doesn't have to be perfect. And if you mess up, you can always repaint it. Now, once the second color hits, I'm like, oh yeah, this is gonna, this is gonna work. We got something here. Now with airbrushing, you ideally want to do a bunch of light coats and let them kind of dry in between. I'm a little heavy handed, but I get better as I go, kinda. If you mess up, wet paintbrush, gently rub it off, no worries. So here's kind of where we're at. We need to put the last darker purple on and then our ombre will kind of be finished. Just wipe it off if we mess up. And here's that darkest purple shade, which I really love. And the key here is just to have fun. If you hate it in the end, you can always repaint it. Of course, I whip out my blow dryer because I have the patience of a two-year-old and I really wanna move on to the next color. I've got this little Corinne wrapped up like a sweet little nun, and I'm very scared going in with the black, because black can be a little scary over light colors. I'm trying to be light-handed. I'm really trying. That's a bit too much paint. Just really try not to 
ever put that much pain at once. Look, just learn what not to do from me. Now I'm trying to figure out how to kind of blend the ombre color with the black. At first I went with purple. I ended up switching it. You can always paint over something if you don't like it. I did a lot of experimenting with this figure and seeing what worked and I was like, oh, I don't like it. Then you just paint over it. Yeah, I was not digging the purple into the black. I ended up switching it and reversing that. We're gonna do that cute little nose. I decided I wanted a little ombre on the front of the face. And of course, with those cute, adorable, fuzzy ears, I had to highlight them. I'm just lightening up that nose a little bit. I am so terrified right now. I do not want to mess up that ombre effect. Just painting the ears. I ended up having to go back because I oversprayed. I have to do that a lot. I'm not super precise with airbrushing yet, so if I mess up, I just have to go back with the other colors. It's no biggie. Here's a little Jenny break for you guys. I love this video of her, she's so adorable. You guys seem to like her on my last video. All right, that's probably my best airbrushing shot in this whole video, enjoy. I'm getting a little more comfortable. Larger areas are a lot less scary. Here I'm using painter's tape to protect an area I would say be very careful when using painter's tape because it can pull your paint off. So I de-stickify it with my fingers and my pants and things like that so it's not super sticky, but here it even pulled off a tiny bit. Now I'm just adding some dimension with the black paint. I'm really trying to go lighter on this one. I did good at not getting too crazy with the heaviness of the paint here. I'm getting a little more comfortable with the airbrush and it shows. So I just wanted a little more depth and I did it in the tail as well. It muted the colors a little bit, but I actually ended up liking that look. And I had to go back with some of the colors to brighten them up just a little bit. It can happen with overspray, not a big deal. I just went through and brightened the colors up just a little. I usually have to do this back and forth a little bit. Now, if you have too much paint, don't worry. I grabbed a dry paintbrush and just cleaned it up. I thickened my paint a little bit because it was too watery. And you want to do light coats, multiple light coats. It always looks the best. It takes more time, but it's worth it. You want to make sure there's no bubbles or streaks left in your paint because that can show through and just take your time. It's always worth it to just take your time and do those multiple coats. I did the little teeth off camera. And here we're going in with the gold. Now this gold took time. I think I did maybe eight layers of the gold and I know that sounds crazy, but it really pays off in the end to do those light coats with a brush airbrush you can kind of get away with more and there we go now I'm just cleaning up those gold areas if there's any over painting I just clean it up get it looking real nice this is so satisfying satisfying to watch and it was satisfying to do myself I went around and just cleaned up all the areas of gold make sure my lines look nice and straight and just really took my time because it really makes a difference. Remember, light coats. Here it is before glossing. I'm going to gloss coat it so I can use an antiquing medium. Glossy. 
So here's the antiquing medium that the guy recommends. I did a 50-50 with the paint and the antiquing staining medium. You just want to paint over an area. I suggest doing it in small areas. I went a little too ham on it here and just started going for it. This is me going ham. And you just want to kind of wipe it off and leave the antiquing medium in all of the nice little details and crevices. It was looking kind of muddy and not looking great and I must not have glossed well enough because I started pulling off the actual paint. Here's where I stare at the sponge like it's the sponge's fault for some reason. And I panic. This was after the panic. I do not have footage of the panicking and me trying to fix it because I was freaking out. But I fixed it and got it to a place that I liked. And I was going to cover it in glitter so I wasn't too worried about it being perfect. Here's the glitter I'm using. It's Dragonfly Glaze by Folk Art. I love this stuff. It is very sparkly, very sparkly. Super fun to use too. So here I've watered it down and I'm doing just multiple coats of this because if you use it full strength, it's gonna cover all my paint. So I wanted to be a little more careful. I ended up doing a couple coats of this watered down glaze over this. It looks really nice. And here I'm just having a blast. I love glitter. I did end up going after this coat and doing some full strength glitter in some of the deep crevices just to add detail. This is after I matte coated it, which I loved. I'm gonna need it matte for later, you'll see. Just a nice satisfying tape peel for you. This horn is not removable, so you do need to tape it before you start painting. Probably should have told you that in the beginning. I actually forgot and had to do it halfway through. And here I'm just going through and getting any spots that were covered by the tape that I missed. And then I added a matte top coat as well to protect that area since obviously it didn't get any of the spray varnish. Here it is. And of course, got to have a nice manicure for this Corinne with some nice glossy little hooves. Now here's why I wanted it matte. I wanted to glaze only the scales with this gloss. I'm actually using a polyurethane gloss. You see it has that cool effect between the matte and the glossy scales. And yes, I painted every single one of those scales by hand. It took me ages, but it was worth it. I'm also doing that effect on the ombre scales on the belly. I just didn't breathe during this whole process. Now it's time for the eyes. I'm using E6000 glue. I also put some on the back of the eye as well, just a little bit. Of course, I blocked the whole screen with my hand. Nice, Nicole. Look at how cute that little eye is. It's so fun to put these in. Their personality comes through right away. Oh, I just love the green with the purple. Look at that. Now it's time to add the nice little felt pad. I really should have taped off the Winstone logo on the bottom. I'm really sad I didn't. But learn from me, tape off the logo. If it's on a little crooked, just carefully peel it off, put it back on. But they're really easy to put on because they're obviously shaped perfectly. And here it is, all done. And here you really get to see that gloss effect. It's subtle, but it's awesome. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please comment and subscribe. It really helps me because I'm a baby channel. And thank you so much for watching.